All right, guys, I just threw together a basic artisan loaf in here. Super easy peasy. I started out with 60 grams of active starter, five grams of salt, and 320 grams of room temp filtered water. Uh, I whisk that together and to that I add 500 grams of bread flour. So as you can see, when you first mix together your artisan loaves, you're literally just looking for a shaggy dough. It's not like we're making cinnamon rolls or sugar cookies where your dough is nice and soft and pliable and kind of fun to play with. We're gonna get to that point. Um, right now, the dough is in the autolyze phase for another 32 minutes. So for the first 30 to 45 minutes, I just let my dough chill and start melting together and um, doing its thing before I touch it and begin the stretching and folding. So in about 30 minutes, I will be back and we will do our first stretch and fold process. And right after the first one, you'll be able to tell a difference in the texture of the dough. So the stretching and folding is basically the process of firming up your dough. Now, I do between five and six stretch and folds. You can literally just do it once and you will still have a successful loaf. I also just fed both of my starters. So there you guys can see there is Kill Bill Volume 2 in the FNG. These guys are gonna be more than likely active and ready for me to use in a recipe in another three to four hours. They are super active little guys. So I will be back and we will do our first stretch and fold process. All right, we are back. It has been 30 minutes and our loaf has been in its autolyze phase. It's gotten a little better. It's not quite as shaggy as it used to be. So I am going to tilt this down so you guys can watch. Right about here. Okay, so the stretch and fold process, you're literally firming up your dough. Um, you can do it one time and you're gonna have a good loaf. Uh, I've done it as little as one to two times and my loaf still turns out good. I try and shoot for five to six times, sometimes I do four. Um, once I do the first one, I wait about 15 to 30 minutes, it just depends. My loaf is a little warm this morning, so I'm probably just gonna go every 15 minutes. So literally all you do, and you can wear gloves if you want, if your loaf is a little sticky, you can wet your hands. My loaf doesn't seem to be too sticky, so we're gonna be good, I'm just gonna go for it. So you're literally going to peel it away from the edges. And by the way, I find you can do this in a mixing bowl. I like to do it in a container like this because you can actually see when it rises. Because when we go into the bulk fermentation mode, we are actually, I'm going to put a little mark with a, a non-permanent marker. Actually, you can get permanent off too. But I'm going to put a little mark there and I'm going to let this guy chill on the counter until usually eight to 10 hours right in there. Um, until it's doubled. So in a container like this, you can really tell once it's doubled. In a bowl, it's really hard to gauge when your dough is technically doubled. So, all right. So you literally are just going to pull it away from the edges and you're gonna pull it up, stretch it, and push it back down. And then I turn and you're gonna pull it up. See, and you can tell, you don't wanna rip it. You don't want to pull too hard that you actually rip it in half. We're not trying to damage our dough here, guys. And the first time you do it, you're gonna feel it's not smooth. You can just tell there's some pieces that probably aren't completely hydrated yet, but this is the fun, this is my funnest part of making grit, actually. Uh, it's just kind of cool because you can literally, you're gonna be able to tell the difference of your dough. Like the next time we do our next stretch and fold, which will be in about 15 to 20 minutes, the dough is gonna be completely different. So I go around and do eight to 10, and you'll, when we get into it later, you'll actually be able to feel the toughness of your dough. Like it doesn't wanna be fucked with anymore. So when it gets super tough and you really can't uh, pull it up, Okay, pop your lid back on it, set your alarm, and come back. So, I use these from the dollar store. These are great. Um, are they great for our environment? No, but I also reuse them. Uh, I use them a lot for when I am just doing this phase. As long as I don't get them icky, um, I reuse these guys quite a bit. My mom is actually in the process of um, starting to sew bowl covers. So I'm super excited for that because we're gonna go fabric shopping and pick out some adorable fabric. Um, 
So anyway, I will be back in 15 minutes and we will do our second stretch and fold. And as you can see, my dough is not super sticky. So if you get just like this, it's nothing. There are times it might be super sticky. Just wet your hands a little before you start to mess with it and you'll be good. So, all right, we will be back. All right, we're back. And as you can see, take this off. Big difference from how it looked before we started this process. So again, this is my second stretch and fold process. And I'm just going to dig into it. I pull from the side. And as you guys can see, I'm literally stretching it up, pushing it back down. I turn it as I go, which is easier for me. And I can already tell a big difference in my dough uh, this time versus the last time. Like it's already starting to get its form. And it might still feel a little bit lumpy to you, a little bit bumpy, but that's why it's really important if you can, ha if you have the time to spend the time doing these stretch and folds. Um, like I said, you are still going to have a fabulous loaf if you just do one stretch and fold. So don't get discouraged and be like, oh my gosh, I just don't have the two hours or the hour and a half to spend. That's fine. You know what? Do one stretch and fold and your bread is going to be fabulous. So. All right. And you can see already how smooth it's actually starting to get. So I am going to pop my lid back on and I'm going to set my alarm for... I did 20 minutes that time. I'm going to do 20 minutes again. And you can see like this time I have way less dough on my hands. So it is doing its job. Um, looking beautiful. So I'll be back and we'll do our third stretch and fold. All right, guys, we're back for our third stretch and fold. And as you can see, it is getting some nice structure to it. Looks much different than the first time that we were doing this. So, much different. All right, I'm gonna turn that down just a little so you guys can see. And we're gonna do our third stretch and fold. And just, I mean, look at that. It's feeling great, nice and firm. And that's what we're looking for, guys. You are firming up your dough. You are giving it some structure so that when it goes into the bulk fermentation process, it is just going to produce a beautiful loaf. And as you can see, like the more you do it, it's, it's getting pretty tough. So I am gonna quit muffin with it. All right, there we go. So I will be back for my fourth stretch and fold, and this is pretty firm. So I think I'm gonna call it a day with my fourth one. And after that, we're just gonna to toss him into bulk fermentation. I'm going to put my lid back on him. And at that point, I'll put a little mark on here and I'm just gonna let him chill for eight to 10 hours on my counter. So I'll be back. All right, we're back for our fourth stretch and fold. And look at this guys, night and day difference from when we first started our dough. So this will be the last one that I do. After this, I'm just gonna mark it with a marker so I can see where I need to be in order to end my bulk fermentation because there is such a thing as over bulk fermenting your dough. All right. Oh yeah, look at that. You guys see that? Mmm, it's beautiful. I swear this is my favorite part. Okay, it's getting pretty tough. Definitely pretty firm. And I'm just gonna pop it down a little. So exciting. All right, and it's not gonna be, because right now you're still kind of in a ball. But I'm gonna just go for right in there. So as you can see, I'm gonna look there. So I'm not gonna want to bake my bread. Actually shape it, it will be our next phase until I get about right here. So this guy is just gonna get popped on my counter. Um, if I was busy today, I might pop it in my uh, in my oven. Um, and then after this, you have the option of either shaping and baking within an hour to two hours, or you can shape it and you can pop it in your fridge. I normally pop it in my fridge for 24 to 36 hours. I just like to get that long ferment, which makes your bread better for your gut and uh, easier to digest. So super cool. Um, 
All right, so I am not going to be back until my dough has bulk fermented, and then we will totally, you guys will see what I mean by doubling. So there's a good look at what my dough looks like now and then you'll be able to see what it looks like in a bit. And then, so since I started doing this, we are at an hour, we're just over an hour and a half. And I wanted to show you guys, you can already see my starters are already doing their thing. So if your starter, if you feed your starter and it's not doing anything within a couple of hours, um, you probably wanna look at maybe temperature, how you're feeding it, where you're keeping it. But yeah, you can already see he's getting pretty happy. I'm looking forward to prepping some sandwich loaves tonight. So, all right guys, I will be back when our bulk fermentation is through. All right guys, we're back. And as you can see, look how big the dough got. You guys saw it earlier. I've already started to pull it away to see how sticky it was gonna be. You guys can use a dough scraper because you want to be careful, you don't want to totally deflate it. I just carefully kind of turn my container upside down and go all the way around until it just kind of plops out. And I do have some rice flour on my cutting board. And I'm gonna put a little bit more over the top. And then, so this is they call this an envelope method. So basically, you're gonna take your dough and you're gonna pull part of it towards you. So you can see it this way. So you're gonna pull it towards you, and then you're gonna take the bottom part and you're gonna put that towards the middle. And then you're gonna bring each side in. So you're basically left with this. Now, some people flip this over and actually use their dough cutter to create tension underneath. I have not mastered that. I've tried. That's just not my thing. So I just do this. I grab my dough. So here's my smooth side. And I'm literally going to pull in and pinch. Pull in and pinch. And I just keep twisting it back and forth and pinching it until I get a nice firm ball and you don't want it to tear so literally look how beautiful that guy is so then I just let it sit on my counter put it back on the rice flour there you can see it right there I'm gonna let this guy sit for 15 minutes I'm gonna put a tea towel over the top of it and after that I will be back and I will show you how we get it into our shaping container all right it has been 15 minutes, and here is our rested loaf. So you can see it rested, expanded a little bit, loosening up. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it into its shaping bowl. I actually love these, these are called banatones. And so if you happen to have one of these guys, which is just a, whoops, tea strainer, this is very cool. So you can put your rice flour, because you're going to want to put dust this with rice flour. Put your rice flour in here. And literally, this way you can get all the way up to the top. You can dust around the whole freaking thing. Ingenious. You literally want this on the sides. There we go. You can also do this with uh, cornmeal. But there you go. All right, so you get that. And then what you're gonna do with your dough, you can use a dough scraper to get it up if you need to. But whatever vessel you're gonna put it into, you're gonna put it into upside down so that your smooth side is on the bottom and your crease where it's come together on where you've either used your dough scraper or you've done kind of the fold method that I do um, is gonna be on top. Pick this guy up very carefully. There we go. So there's the bottom. The bottom is actually going to go on the top. And then I am just going to carefully set this guy in there. There we go. You're able to see that. Just like so. 
And now you can either set this on your counter for about an hour to two hours to finish its uh, final rise, and you can pop it in the oven, or you can actually toss it in the fridge, which is what I prefer to do, um, anywhere for five to 36 hours. So I generally go about a day and a half or so. Um, I find that it's also a lot easier and less stress on your loaf to score a loaf that comes out of your fridge versus just letting it chill on the counter. So there you guys go. That was all of our different phases. This is our final phase and it is just going to stay in here until we bake. Um, when I get ready to bake, I'm going to put a piece of parchment paper over this with a plate, flip it upside down. I'm going to score it with <clears throat> my blade. You can use a like a non-serrated knife. I don't know if I have mine in here. This is actually a bread lame made for sourdough. You can use just a regular razor blade. I would score the top and then I would use my parchment paper to just gently lift it down into my baking vessel that's been preheating in my oven. So there you have it guys. Super easy and I will definitely be sharing pictures of this guy after he bakes. Thanks again for watching.